Today, we are going to take a posture of peace by talking about hard things with both gentleness and humility. Posture is a short, audible fist bump to remind you God is with you in everything. Together, we're going to be emboldened to take a daily posture of perfect peace. Listen to this amazing invitation and promise from Jesus found in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. He says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Listen to this. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In today's episode, Ashley shares her testimony of overcoming severe chronic anxiety and depression. And it's a journey that includes help from doctors and medication. Now, I know that there is a lot of debate and conversation and questions circulating around the internet about whether or not Christians should even use tools like medication and therapy. But I wanna tell you that in all of my exposure of all the information that I've read and watched and listened to, I have never heard what Ashley shares in this episode. And I believe the way in which she humbly and gently clarifies what her process looked like is going to set you free today. I know this is a divisive topic. On both sides of the debate, people carry a lot of pain. And maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been misinformed. Maybe you've been made to feel inferior by one group or another because of whatever decision you made. And if that is you today, I want you to know that as a child of God, shame, condemnation, inferiority is not your inheritance in Christ. You do not have to live with that any longer. And my prayer for you today is that this episode reminds you of your power and your position in Christ. Because no matter what tools you choose to use here on earth for your health and healing, it does not change the truth that God is your source for all things. And discovering and experiencing the depth of that truth is the treasure of our journey with Him in every single circumstance we face. Now, this is a clip of a full 90-minute conversation that Ashley and I had about living in a lifestyle of rest. I want to invite you, do not settle for just watching this one clip today. I know there's so much competing for your time and attention, but the full conversation will bring much greater clarity and empowering truth to what is shared in today's episode and you deserve to know the truth. So click the link in the description of this episode to watch that full conversation. You have a powerful testimony where this, this is what happened in action. Um, mm -hmm. And you taught, you mentioned tools and I, I want you to speak to that as well because um, you know part of my journey was overcoming anxiety and it was a journey. It wasn't yeah. this instant, it was a miraculous healing, but it wasn't an instant one. And I'm so grateful for that because I can look back and see that the Lord was on a journey with me into permanency, where if something had happened maybe instantly, I would not have experienced maturity. I would have experienced a level of freedom, but not a lifestyle of freedom into peace. And I know for you, you've battled depression in the past mm -hmm. and a deep lifestyle yeah. of grief and coming yeah. from a place of um, wanting to do the right thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wanting yeah. to be good for God, which is what I wanted to do. Yes. I thought a busy Christian, I thought a good Christian Correct. was a busy Christian. It led me That's into right. a lifestyle of yeah. panic. And for yeah. you, it was like, I want to be good for God, but it led to this yeah. place of deep heaviness. So I want you to yeah. share a little bit about that and how um, you maybe utilize tools like medication, because that's something mm -hmm. that I know is very controversial and people think, yeah. well, I'm not living in faith. For me, it wasn't yeah. prescription medication, but it was supplements and some natural yeah. health things, which I consider the same thing. It's a tool. Yeah. 
So share yeah. your story and then share this revelation of, I can utilize this tool as a son, but I'm not subject to it and how the Lord matured you in that process. Yes. So let's, um, okay. Trying to think of like how to start this. Okay. So let me just start uh, really quickly with my story. Um, so I grew up in a Christian home and uh, in fact, grew up uh, overseas and, um, and, uh, and it it was a charismatic home. We believed in the power of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we did believe in, in power. We believed in the power of, of, of the Lord. Uh, but, you know, today, uh, operating in today as it was back in Bible times, but I received instruction that I received in my private school that I went to. I was, I was homeschooled, but I did a private Christian curriculum as well as, you know, the, when I would read the Bible or the church that I went to, I received the instruction from a very legalistic mindset. I was constantly trying to find another T to cross, another I to dot. I read the Bible from cover to cover and, and would just study it. In fact, even in college, I would get up at, I don't remember, I think it was like six in the morning on a Saturday, you know, it, it would really you know, annoying my poor roommates, um, <laughs> six o'clock on a Saturday. And then I would go, I would eat breakfast. And then I would go to this little, uh, coffee slash, uh, coffee house slash uh, restaurant on campus. And I would literally study the Bible there for hours every Saturday. And because I was so desperate to learn the, learn about the Lord, to find the, to find the truth, to find the right way of doing things, to, to understand what would please God, to understand how to actually execute that. And I believed that I didn't have God's attention. I believe I didn't have his love because I didn't feel it. The reason I didn't feel it, though, is because I didn't believe it. But uh, because what it is that we believe actually determines our feelings. Again, the feelings are simply a thermometer of what it is that we're actually truly believing deep down. Not it is what it is we think we believe, but what it is that we really believe. That's what our, our, our feelings are actually reflecting. Uh, I, was, I had a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, constantly trying to make sure that I wasn't out of favor with the Lord uh, and trying to get his blessing his love. And at the absolute very least, I was desperate to at least have his attention. Be mm. And it's fascinating that even for uh, a child, ch children even exhibit this people, you know, of all ages exhibit this, but especially we see it in children, that, that negative attention is better than no attention. And it's an indication of a, of a spiritual principle. And that is the fact that we can't handle any, we can't handle no attention from God. We can't handle a lack of connection, whether it be a lack of connection with the Lord, lack of connection with other people, but specifically talking about a relationship with the Lord, we cannot handle a lack of connection. In fact, it's a lack of connection that, that, uh, that births traumas. That is how traumas are, are, are birds is they are actually a feeling of a lack of connection and coping mechanisms such as an addiction are, ways in which we are trying to trying to create a semblance or a feeling of connection, even if it was, you know, with the drug or whatever, it's this trying to get back this feeling of connection. It's that important. And that feeling of a lack of connection between me and the Lord is what drove me uh, almost to the point of my spirit breaking. It was so bad. I drove myself into the ground, you know, spiritually, professionally, you know, relationally, everything. I was a business consultant and would work up to 21 hours in a day, go home and be uh, to sleep what little bit I could because it took me about like 45 minutes to get home and then back. So I'm only sleeping and taking shower like for two hours of that, something like that. And would be back four hours later. And, um, and I was just always trying to do the right thing, always trying to make sure that everything was above board, that I would have no reason to be shamed before the Lord, no reason to be feel condemned, and that I would just have his attention. I really wanted his love, but oh my word, if I could just have his attention. Um, and finally, in December 2018, oh well, of course, during that time, I had a major crisis of faith, by the way, but prior to December 2018, I had a major crisis of faith, almost walked away from the Lord because I couldn't, I couldn't sense him. I thought, well, maybe he's not even real. But then I realized I was so mad at him, 
so mad at him that I refused to let that go. And I knew that the, that if I chose to, that he wasn't even real, that I'd have to let go of that anger. And I refused to let go of that anger. So that's how I realized, okay, apparently I really, I really believe God's real because you know, you have to be angry at something. So it's like, okay, apparently I believe God's real. And I made that choice way back then. I don't know how long ago that was 14 years ago, maybe. I thought, okay, God, if you're real, I can't not follow you. I have to follow you. Even if you desire ill for me, even if it's like, Lord, I don't know if you're good or if you're evil. I, I really don't. Um, and maybe everything that I thought about you being good, maybe it really is wrong because I feel like, like you hate me. Um, I feel like how my life is going that you hate me. I just feel horrible inside. But I said, God, if you exist, even if you were to be causing me to live my life the way that I am in order to try to kill me, then I, I, even if that is true, Lord, I can't not follow you. So I made a very major decision of, uh, in my crisis of faith. And God says, now that you have chosen me, regardless of how I show myself and reveal to you of myself, of who it is that I am, now I'm going to reveal to you two things. I'm going to reveal to you that I am good and I'm going to reveal to you that I am love. So the next, you know, decade, decade and a half, that's what he's been teaching me. He first taught me that he was good. And then over the past several years, he's been teaching me that he's love so that I can actually truly believe it. But anyway, I had to go on a major healing, you know, journey, even from that crisis of faith. But even after that, that was in the middle of uh, my ang major anxiety. Um, and I would have anxiety attacks, I would hyperventilate. Um, I, uh, I had to eventually even get on medication, even though I tried to avoid that. And the reason that I did is I realized that nothing that I was doing, no matter how hard I tried to believe God, it wasn't, I still didn't understand about faith yet. And no matter how tried I believe, how hard I tried to believe and have that feeling um, or logically convince myself that what he said really was true, I couldn't ever seem to shift. Mm -hmm. And so I needed a bit of help. Uh, so I got on some medication to kind of get my hormones up so that my, I wasn't having to fight both my soul and my body. My, mm -hmm. I could give my body a bit of help in order to put more energy towards my soul and my spirit, my relationship with the Lord. It was just kind of like a, a helpful tool. And I received it as a good gift from a, and this is what I recommend to people to receive it as a good gift from a good father that, that if his children need help with something, he's provided us with means of things that we can grab in creation to be able to help us. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking just a second about how we're not supposed to rely on that. But that's what I ended up using um, those, uh, the anxiety medication for. In fact, it was so bad, I, was, uh, I, was, uh, I had what is referred to as severe chronic uh, depression. Is that what that's called? It was, it was very, very, very bad. It was to the point of suicide. Um, uh, but anyway, so eventually the Lord helped me over that, uh, eventually helped me leave the medicine cold Turkey. The first time I asked him if I could leave it, the only reason I'm going into this detail is just for the help of some of these people who Super might helpful. be really concerned. I want them to hear with everything it is that I'm talking about related to our identity, rest, etc., And the fact that we govern in creation, we're not governed by it. We're not victim by it. It's important for us to not villainize creation and to villainize using uh allowing creation to partner with us as we serve the lord and to receive good gifts from a good father anyway uh, we just don't need to give them power over us but anyway what i ended up doing is the first time that i asked the lord uh, uh to uh, if i could leave cold turkey because i said lord i don't want to be dependent on this anymore i've been dependent on it for x amount of time and uh, i don't by the way they they had to continue, they had to up my dose because things just weren't strong enough. And so mm -hmm. eventually I just said, Lord, so I think I was taking a double dose and I said, Lord, can I please, uh, due to doctor prescription, Lord, can I please get off of this? And he said, no, you're not ready. It's like, bummer. I'm so disappointed. And, uh, but then the next time I asked him after that, I waited a while and I asked him again and he said, yes, now you can. And I literally went off it, that double dose, the cold turkey, and was perfectly fine. Um, so I was very grateful for that. I say that because it's very important to ask the Lord about things regarding like 
you know, medication and, or even, or supplements or whatever, it's, it's, um, it, for, I believe that it's something that we shouldn't, that we shouldn't villainize and mm -hmm. we should understand, we should just, everything needs to be about relationship with the Lord, not mm -hmm. about making rules for ourselves. Right. That's putting us back under, we're creating a new, we're, we're trying to create a New Testament version um, or a 20, for first century version of the of the old covenant where right. it had all of these laws. Now we're just having different laws about, well, you can do these things and you can take these things in your body and you these you can't. It can right. still you be can religion. You can take supplements, but you can't yes. take prescription medication. I've heard it all, right? Because we've Correct. been in, yes. in that world. And if yeah. we don't view it as a tool, a good gift from a good father that we Correct. truly have dominion over, yeah. We don't have to, to villainize. We can govern those things yes. in partnership with him and they don't Correct. become separators. But yes, what the law was, exactly. it was a separator and God Correct. takes separation very seriously. And so there is no separation anymore yeah. because of what Christ has done. And so yeah. we can put um, illusions of separation, like you mentioned, yes. like new laws, <laughs> yes. but that is not what the Lord Breaking desires. He, he, re he desires relationship. So great. Correct. Glad you made that point. I think it's really helpful. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention that just so that people don't, because um, so often when I've talked about things and talked about the aspect of it, invited people into the freedom that God invites us into, I don't want, uh, if, if I'm not careful, people can, if I don't mention the other side, people can think, okay, then the other side's bad. No, I'm not trying to villainize something other than not trusting in God, but we can trust in God and take medication. But the whole, because the whole point is relationship. What is God having you do in this season? Yep. And it might be different than what God has you do for in next season or what God has you do versus somebody else. So it's all about relationship. But anyway, so I took medication, essentially got off of it, which I was very glad of. Uh, and he began to heal me of my depression, my anxiety, um, all of that. But then um, several years later in December, 2018, I finally... I'd still been driving myself into the ground in every area of my life, trying so hard to do the right thing, et cetera. I was very, 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 very much a people pleaser. I was in bondage to people pleasing. Mm. Uh, and I, anyway, December, 2018, I told the Lord, I, I reached the end of it because I realized I had a laundry list of, of beautiful gifts that I'd asked the Lord for that he, I knew that he thought were wonderful. I mean, my goodness, things like marriage, children, a house, you know, um, you know, uh, I wanted to be a housewife and mom. Me personally, I didn't want to work, you know, um, and it, which is funny because I went, I mean, meaning like it be the, like the breadwinner in my family because, but which is funny because as a single person, that's what I, that's all that I did. I would work up to 21 hours in a day, et cetera. So I was yeah, like, to the end oh, degree. I'm you didn't just yes. work <laughs> 21 hour days. <laughs> Everything has been to the nth degree in my life. Oh my word. I, I'm very <laughs> extreme. But anyway, so I had all of these gifts that I asked for from the Lord. They weren't like, Lord, I want to be the best singer and Lord, I want to whatever. They were things that I thought were normal that other people were getting by just falling into them in life. And they weren't even asking God. And I was asking God for them so very much because they were so important to me. And I, and the reason I say that is, I, they were just normal little things. And I suddenly that December looked around it at the people around me and realized God had given all of those people, all of those people, all of the gifts I had asked for. Mm. And I didn't have one. Wow. And I thought, okay, this isn't a little hint. This is, there's something major here that I'm missing. And I told the Lord, Lord, apparently I don't know how to have a relationship with you. I read the Bible cover to cover everything it is that I've done, Lord. I was doing because I thought I was, um, I was sacrificing my life for you. If I wanted to make, if I didn't know about how to make a decision, Lord, I'd ask, I'd always ask you, what do you want me to do? And if you didn't tell me something immediately, I'd think, okay, what do I want to do? Okay, that's probably whatever it is I want to do. Yeah, that was probably from, from inside of me. And therefore it's bad. Wow. Everything I want must be bad. So I won't do those things. Okay. So what do I not want to do? Okay. You know what? That's probably the thing God's wanting me to do. So I wouldn't do the things that I wanted to in life. And I'd always do the things I, that I didn't want to do. And I was exhausted. I was burnout. I was extremely resentful mm -hmm. against God.
That is a really big issue. He's big enough to take it, but that's a very big issue because it's creating separation in my relationship with him. Anyway, that's the situation I found myself in in December 2018. And I said, apparently, I don't know how to have a relationship with you. I've tried everything that I that I could find in the Bible other than following the Mosaic law. I have been literally doing everything. Um, and if I thought that maybe you would tell me to do something, I would, I would do it and I would risk my professional career on it or I'd risk a relationship on it. It was extreme. I said, apparently, Lord, I'm not doing something right. So um, I'm asking you to, uh, to reveal to me who it is that you really are. And in the meantime, I'm going to start doing what it is that I want to do desires that came up out of that come up out of my heart and and as soon as I did that I found God it was really amazing as soon as I did that he revealed to me that he was in he was in the things that brought me life in other words the, the when the when life springs up within us not just a desire and something we want so in other words not a want but a, where life springs within us, that's the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's where God was. But I assumed because I would felt it like that within me that I thought, oh, you know, to, to think about doing that or, or to have that career or to take that job or to have that relationship, whatever. Oh my word, that, that feels like life. I thought because it came from inside of me that I was supposed to squelch it and that it was wrong and bad. And God's like, no, actually, that's me. So as soon as I, as soon as I made my decision and I began to actually pursue dreams um, and tell the Lord about dreams that I was pursuing, he got so excited. I felt his joy. I felt him. And I had been so desperate to just feel himself. To feel his presence and the, and I was and I remember sitting there thinking oh my word Lord this is where you've been the whole time you've been in in me you've been in um, in the things that brought me that where it feels like my spirit is rising up in as uh, in life within myself uh, and that just set me on a whole new trajectory. And then from that point on, he began to teach me about my identity, began to teach me about the fact that I'm one with him. I'd always read those phrases in the Bible. Yeah. That's not a great, it didn't, it wasn't changing my life because I wasn't truly believing the extent to which he says that all those things are true. And I wasn't founding my reality, my actual reality on that truth. And so as soon as I started to do that, amazing things started to happen. I began to uh, physically heal. I began uh, to, because uh, there were ways in which your body, just like we want it to manifest our spirit and our identity, if it's not manifesting and in other words, revealing and showing our, who it is that we actually are in spirit, it's actually revealing, you know, the corruption of the flesh. It's manifesting our fears. It's manifesting what it is that our soul is choosing to believe is true. The decision that it's making of, of believing God or not believing God, and it will manifest that. And because I was not believing God, I was believing He'd abandoned me. My body was turning in on itself, thinking that it was abandoned and alone, subject to this world. And I had horrible, horrible gut um, issues, horrible issues. You know, just like you, it's very common um, for uh, people who struggle with high with anxiety. Period but especially high anxiety that typically is our digestive tract that suffers the most. And the gut is the second brain. Um, in fact, some doctors think it might even be the first brain that the, that, that this brain actually gets uh, it's uh, I don't want to say it's instructions from, but that it's more important and drives even the first brain mm -hmm. uh, or this brain. So it depends on who you talk to as to what they, as to their theory and what they think is going on. Point is it's extremely important so what we're doing when we're not believing God is we're self-destructing. We're self-destructing in soul and body, not in our spirit, mm -hmm. because we can't ever do that. It's perfect. But in our soul and our body that we are. So I began to physically heal. Um, I began to heal inner wounds, inner traumas without trying. I wasn't wow. even aware that I was doing it. I was just changing my sense of identity of who it is that I am. And then I found myself in, I would find myself in situations that I've been triggered in literally for decades. And I wasn't being triggered. 
And I didn't even realize it at the time. I didn't even realize it until, you know, after it had happened and I'd gone on and whatever, and I'm looking back on events and I'm thinking, wait just a second. So-and-so said that. So-and-so said that, did that. I, it didn't even bother me. I didn't even notice that they said that they said or did that. And then I realized I was healing from inner traumas without having to do all this focused work on, okay, mm-hmm. you know, who am I angry with and why am I hurt? And okay, when they say that, I've got to believe it's not true. That's a lot of effort. I do right. that sometimes if that's what my soul needs. Again, a tool, nothing wrong with it. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with using psychological tools to kind of help ourselves, tell ourselves something, remind ourselves of something, etc. But the thing is, we have got to choose that we are not subject to that. We are not subject to needing something outside of us as if something has more power than we do and we need it in order to be fixed. God fixes us. God heals us. We can allow aspects of creation and aspects of his, his laws that he's put into, into uh, the metaphysical realm, like say, for instance, psychological laws or um, uh, you know, metaphysical laws or, or visible laws. We can use those things. We can allow those aspects of creation to partner with us to heal. Mm-hmm. But we have got to choose that God is our healer Um, And that we're just allowing it to partner with us. We're just allowing those tools to partner with us and be part of the process Mm -hmm. of us healing. Instead of relying on them and thinking we're in lack and that we have to have them Mm -hmm. in order to be okay. It's our God who makes us okay. It's Mm -hmm. our God who says we already are okay. And we're just like children asking God, I don't understand how, but I'm choosing to believe that it is true that I really am okay. Like that baby with all the arms and legs, I'm choosing, you know, that doesn't know how to use them yet. Lord, I'm choosing that I have everything that I need, but I don't know where it is. I don't know how to rely on it. So will you father me into that? And like what you're saying, well, when I'm five, I'm five. That's okay. A five-year-old needs a lot of help from his father. And he uses all kinds of tools that, um, that you know, when you're 35, you don't need to use. Mm-hmm. Because a five-year-old just kind of needs extra help. And that there's nothing wrong with being five. Just, it, he's not condemned because he's not 35. There's a mm-hmm. place for being a five-year-old. God's the one who created the process to work like that. Yeah. So there's no condemnation in not being a particular place yet. Um, and that's very important for people to realize when they take the same journey that I did, though, which I really hope people do, is to that that you can hear that the struggle it is that I that I took through everything. And I I just I recommend to everyone the first thing that you do is to choose no shame and no condemnation for yourself and realize that that the whole point is the journey. It's not the destination. God's the one who created it to always to be a journey because the whole point is relationship. It's not the relationship. It's not that the thing has to eventually land somewhere. The landing somewhere or whatever gives us a direction in which we're heading. But the whole point is the getting there. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship. It's growing from five to six and, and gathering, you know, tools or not uh and uh what would you call that uh just kind of skills Mm -hmm. skills and understanding and ability to under to to grasp logic etc and moving from one age to the next uh so i i just had to have grace for myself i'm still shifting into rest in so many different areas but i do teach what it is that i do live and own thus far Um, and what I is that I have moved into. And I'm very open and honest about the fact that I, there are so many areas that I really, that I really um, struggle in that I, and I know what it is that I should do. And there's a reason why this is hard, including for me, it's hard to make the decision. It's hard to make the choice. It's hard to trust the Lord because we don't believe he's safe. But anyway, so that was my, um, that was my journey. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I think the power of testimony is so powerful because it does prove all of this truth yeah. that we see in his word. And it also gives us an invitation to, in certain areas, be five yeah. for a minute, right? Yeah. As we yeah. learn to grow. And you realize, you know, I, I've shared my story before with the posture community, so they're probably more familiar, but there's a lot of similarities in that it didn't just happen. Yeah. It was a yeah. journey. It's a continuous journey. And yeah. that's the treasure of it. Yeah. is that that's where we yeah. experience life and life abundantly.